Using a plastic model kit from Ravel and a fully custom 3D printed RC chassis, I transformed this 124 scale 1980 Jeep J10 pickup into a fully functional model. The results were okay, it worked, technically. Today though, I'm back at the bench and ready to do some more small scale wrenching. Will this tiny DIY Jeep finally be ready to truly conquer the trails? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome back. If you've been following along with our recent videos, you'll know that a couple weeks ago I built this custom Jeep J10, my first proper 4x4 plastic model to RC conversion. While in the past I've used a store-bought ready-to-run RC chassis as a base for a highly detailed body from a plastic model kit, for this project I went all in and created a more detailed platform that can be 3D printed. Naturally, choosing that route has resulted in a few challenges which I'm hoping to overcome in today's video. Some of you may be asking why go to all this trouble when there are plenty of perfectly good micro crawler chassis already available on the market. Well, there are a number of reasons. For example, by designing and 3D printing my own components, I can ensure that all of the parts are sized correctly and will fit right in place of the non-functional parts included in the plastic model kit. While there are many RC crawlers that advertise as being 124 scale, mathematically speaking, that's not really the case for many of these rigs. Although trucks like this FCX24M from FMS work great and are a lot of fun to drive, they tend to be quite a bit larger, which will result in most true-to-scale 124th plastic models either not being able to fit on top, or they'll appear more like a mega truck or monster truck with large tires relative to the body. In addition, very few off-the-shelf store-bought micro-crawlers feature a drivetrain layout similar to what can be found on a real Jeep J10. This chassis that I have here features a front-mounted motor, divorce transfer case, and offset front axle. When I'm building a scale model like this, for me these details matter, and the more accurate I can make it to the real thing, the better. There's also nearly endless adjustability with these 3D printed parts, meaning I can make it fit a variety of plastic models, from full-size pickups to CJ Jeeps. The use of leaf springs and tiny electronics help add realism to this platform, and while it certainly won't be winning any crawler comps, the idea here is to make a model that looks as close to the real thing as possible that just so happens to also be a fully functional RC vehicle. Of course, I also really enjoy the challenge of creating my own design and building something from the ground up. I explain a lot more in the prior build video, which I'll be linking to below in the description. I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already, but I'll pretty much be picking up right where I left off at the end of that video. I had a great looking 124 scale model of a Jeep J10 that actually worked and could be driven off-road, but it certainly wasn't without its flaws, mainly the fact that it spent more time in two-wheel drive than four-wheel drive. Not good when you've got a truck this tiny. So without any further introductions, let's pull this rig into the shop, break out the tiny screwdrivers, and see what I can do to make it better. I think I may have picked the wrong morning to drink four cups of coffee. Hmm. First and foremost on the agenda was to get the front axle fixed. As you may recall, springs are used to connect the inner and outer axle, which allows both power to be transferred and the steering knuckles to turn. A very simple solution, but not without compromise. The biggest issue I had during the first test drive was both the springs eventually became detached, no longer transferring power to the front wheels, so as a result, the truck only had rear wheel drive. This of course severely hindered this truck's already limited off-road abilities. Before, I simply used super glue and baking soda to attach the springs. While it felt solid, it seems it wasn't solid enough, so I had to move to a stronger method. After fully disassembling the front axle, I removed all of the dried glue with a wire wheel and sandpaper, making sure there is nothing but clean metal on the surface. Rather than using any kind of adhesive, I decided to try soldering the pieces together. I have no experience soldering anything this small aside from electronics, so my knowledge and skill with this is pretty limited, but it is important to know that the solder that you use for electronics might not work for an application such as this, as you may find it difficult or impossible to get the solder to stick to the metal. I specifically chose a solder and flux intended for metals such as steel, stainless steel, or copper. I believe this is a tin silver solder, but I mostly just went off the fact it was advertised to work with the metals that I'm using here, 
so that's why I ordered it. Fortunately, I found a seller on eBay that sells both the solder and the flux in small quantities like this for about eight bucks, which is great since I don't need a ton of it, and I wasn't even sure how well it would work at this point, so it's always nice when you don't have to invest a lot of money when trying something out. The process was pretty simple. I just dropped some flux onto the surface and melted the solder with the same iron that I'd use for electronics. And although not very pretty, it did provide a solid connection. Something that made soldering these springs onto the threaded axles a bit more difficult was the fact that the inner diameter of the springs is larger than that of the axle. I've since ordered some smaller diameter springs that fit tightly around the threaded axles, which should help to make this process a bit easier. Regardless though, like I said, I was able to get a nice strong bond, and although some Dremel action was required to ensure the bearings could slide out far enough on this assembly so it would fit back in the housing, it all feels solid. Although securely attaching those springs was priority number one, as you may recall there is also a ton of play and movement in the front end around the steering knuckles. This is going to be hard to eliminate entirely, just due to the nature of this setup, but I was able to get things a bit tighter just by throwing on some M1 washers to sit between some of the hardware, so by the time I had this front axle back together, it was definitely better than it was before. After getting the front end reinstalled and the body put back on, I did a little testing at the bench. Everything was looking good so far, but the real test, of course, is to get it out onto the trails. Obviously, this J10 is much more of a trail truck than an all-out crawler, so we chose this terrain accordingly. Still though, what a difference four-wheel drive makes. I've not yet had any issues with the front axles since soldering the springs into place. For my next build utilizing this chassis, I think I might step up to a slightly thicker spring since the steering servo seems to be able to steer the truck just fine, and I'd like to take some of the slop out between the rotation of the inner axle and the outer one. I know it's going to be hard to reduce that slop entirely, but any reduction will be good. Of course I have to be careful not to get any grass or small twigs caught up in the springs or wrapped around the axle. This is something you have to watch out for with really any RC vehicle you're driving outside, but it's especially important with a truck this small. I really don't want those springs to become uncoiled. Overall a mild trail run for this second test drive, but I was really happy with how the truck was performing. It did however break once again. Off camera, I accidentally slid the truck off a small ledge, this time the rear axle was the issue, so that means it was time to go back to the shop and have a look. Overall a successful second test drive, but this truck was going to need a little work before it would be ready to return to the trails. As you can see right here, there's two little posts on the top side of the axle housing that press fits into the bottom of the leaf spring, one of which has broken off. Not really surprising as I assume this would be a weak point and it's one of the many elements of this chassis that needs redesigned. It's a very simple method to attach the leaf spring but not a very durable one. I also noticed that this section here on the rear drive shaft has started to twist but I just bent it back into shape and we'll see how much longer it lasts. I tried to brainstorm a better fix for the axle, but I decided the easiest and probably strongest solution was just to glue the leaf spring into place. Maybe not a perfect solution, but it's all back together and ready to drive once again.
We did attempt some slightly more treacherous terrain on test drive number three, although slightly probably being the key word here. Honestly though, all things considered, I think the truck's working well. I'm sure among the many videos here on YouTube, there's far more impressive RC driving footage out there, and this bouncy rickety Jeep might not seem all that impressive, but just seeing something that you've designed from the ground up and built yourself is way cooler and a way bigger sense of satisfaction than just taking a ready to run out of the box and watching it move. Well, that's my opinion anyways. Again, as I said before, this suspension is very bouncy and not that scale looking yet. Also, I was really noticing this truck's lack of torque in certain areas, resulting in it struggling to get over certain obstacles or make it up even what seemed like relatively mild hills. Still though, despite all that, a fun truck to drive and that's really what the hobby is all about. It certainly was fun while it lasted, but the Jeep didn't come out entirely unscathed. I guess driving around super scale trucks means having some super scale issues. A broken leaf spring ended the drive a little early. I thought that I may have damaged it a little during the reassembly process I did before this test drive, although I since have broken the other leaf spring as well, so it probably just needs to be strengthened. Oh, and remember that twisted drive shaft? Yeah, it's gotten a bit worse. Fortunately, after just a few minutes of 3D printing, I had some new parts ready to install. For now, I just printed some identical replacements to the parts that I'm changing out, but clearly some design revisions will need to take place to really improve the durability and reliability of this platform. That's a task for another day though. If nothing else, hopefully this illustrates why I've decided to hold off on releasing STL files for this chassis until things can be made at least a little bit more refined. Fortunately though, thanks to the magic of 3D printing, the replacement parts are super cheap and unlimited. To help fix the lack of torque and hopefully help the low speed control, I decided to swap out the motor. I replaced the 300 RPM and 20 motor with a 150 RPM, which had finally arrived in the mail, so I could solder the wires and install it on the chassis. The truck is definitely slower with this new motor installed, but there is a bit more torque as well. Still far from perfect, but I'd say it's a slight improvement overall. While I think an N20 motor is adequate for this type of model to RC conversion, if I wanted to build a similar truck that's just a bit more of a driver, I think going with a slightly larger motor would help. Of course, as I've said before, the idea here is really just to make a lifelike plastic model that just so happens to be able to be driven. There isn't much point to laser focusing on performance, as at that point I'd be far better off just choosing one of the more established crawler platforms. But it'll be interesting to see how well I can make a truck using one of these chassis drive without sacrificing lifelike realism with regards to the body, interior, undercarriage, and engine bay. Test drive number four was a lot of fun, but also resulted in a bit of damage. This time the other leaf spring broke along with the other post securing the leaf spring to the axle. Well, at least the front end of the chassis is yet to have any issues since soldering those springs into place, but I think you're starting to get the idea and I don't want this video to drag on for too long. Problem solving, patience, and delayed gratification are musts if you're going to be getting into this niche of the RC hobby. But for a few of us crazy folks, that's what makes it challenging and fun. Broken parts are to be expected, and overall, I've actually been really impressed with this Jeep so far, and I think it demonstrates a lot of potential for future 4x4 plastic model to RC conversions. But of course, at the same time, there's still a few things I need to work on. For now though, I hope you all enjoyed this little update. As always, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button if you want to see more videos like this, but that's all I've got for you today. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.